Hey everyone, welcome to another HEB Cooking Connection virtual cooking class. We're so excited you decided to join us today. Uh, speaking of today, uh, I'm your host, Scott, and uh, today we have a fantastic class. Uh, last week, if you were with us, it was all about vegan. We did some great vegan recipes, some really simple ways to kind of turn the lights on if you're looking to uh, either start eating more vegetables or just try to, to see if you can just keep up with a, the vegan lifestyle. Uh, great stuff going on. We thank you for joining us this week. We take a 180 degree turn and we do everything all bacon. So we listen to you, our customers, and when you say, hey, we wanna see more of this or more of this, we like to listen. So you said a bacon lover's class. This is our bacon lover's class. With me as always in this adventure is Charlotte Samuel, my uh, fact checker, my timekeeper, my Googler of all Google things. Thanks for being here. Also a bacon lover. Eyes in the sky is what she is. Uh, keep me on track. Thanks for being here. Uh, you're a big bacon lover? Yeah, big I bacon. Am. I am. You know, I prefer the bacon to be cooked in the oven on a sheet pan. I do. That's the way as well. I like it. That's why I, like uh, it. I wish you could see the setup, but you can't. Uh, it looks like Charlotte's sitting in a news desk with papers, and it's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch. Uh, it's like uh, the weekend, weekend I'm edition. I'm feeling very, a, <laughs> like, very newsy. <laughs> yes, very professional over here. Like it, I know it, exactly 100%, Chef. Looks 100% professional. Uh, we got a lot going on. We're going to dive right in. Uh, of course, everything bacon. Uh, for us here uh, in America, our bacon starts with, of course, pork belly. So I'm going to grab our pork belly. Uh, we're going to start from the pork belly. We're going to work our way down to the already cured bacon. But if you go to your local HEB, now I say that local HEB, not every HEB carries the same stuff. So you probably know now uh, if your local HEB carries this or not. This is our, uh, we've got the sky cam. Rob will show you. This is our uh, HEB natural half cut pork belly. So it's a half slab of a pork belly. Uh, typically these weigh in the range of like, I would say three and a three quarter pounds to around like up to six, six and a half pounds, depending on how big they are, all a little bit different. This is about a five and a half pounder. It's a great one to start with. Uh, we are going to cure for our first rest. We're going to make a confit pork belly. What is it with me and confit? I don't know. We just, we did a couple weeks ago. We confit chicken. It's delicious to cook something low and slow in some fat. It renders, it's delicious, it stays moist, and the pork belly is no exception to that confine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pork bellies. I've got one right here, let me show you this. So we need to cure the pork belly. Now, if you're looking at these recipes and you're saying, hey, this is a, we're biting off a lot tonight. We've got five different recipes we're gonna show you start to finish. Pretty much everything you can do with me from start to finish. You'll finish with the carbonara. Of course, you can put that on the table tonight. Nice glass of wine, you're ready to go with the kids and everything. Uh, if you're gonna make the pork belly, it's gonna require a little more time and attention. So if you're starting with the pork belly, you can enjoy this on Friday or perfect time to cure it today along with me. And then you can have it over the weekend and it's dynamite for whatever get together. It is Labor Day weekend coming up, Charlotte. Do you have big Labor it Day is. plans? Um, I mean, I, who doesn't love a three day weekend? Right, always. All right, yes. so the pork belly, we're gonna cure this. So we're gonna do a simple spice mixture. So our cure is gonna start with a little coarse, kosher salt. We're gonna lose a brown sugar. Now why brown sugar over white sugar? Because I like the molasses and the brown sugar. I believe it makes a little better uh, flavor overall. I think nothing wrong with white sugar. If you wanna do a white sugar kosher salt mix, totally fine. We're doing a two to one ratio. We got a cup of kosher salt. We're using a half a cup of brown sugar. So here's my pork belly. So we need to score this pork belly. So what does that mean when I say we're gonna score the pork belly? So we're gonna to toast a spice mixture. We're gonna mix it in with our salt and sugar and then we're basically gonna just cover this whole thing together. So it starts with fat side up. So now I'm not gonna trim this. I believe this is some really, really great fat on the pork belly. I feel like that's why people eat bacons because they love the fat in this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with just a sharp knife and I'm just gonna kind of score this, not all the way down to the flesh. You can see I'm getting pretty deep in this if you look at the old overhead camera. So I'm gonna just cut diagonal across here. I'm going to spin this guy around so you can see like it's deep enough to where I want that seasoning to get in there and really kind of penetrate it. And then the other side, we're going to do it like this, same way. And we're going to make these little diamond marks across it. So all the way down. Oh, I messed that one up. They were, they were uniform until that cut. No, they were they're close. perfect. So you can kind of see. So I cut them deep enough to where they'll get the mixture. And now what is, I'm going to put it back, a uh, big fan, by the way, of disposable pans because that way, whatever mess is left after this thing cures, you can just toss it out. We'll take it out and I'll show you that whole process. I'm gonna put this knife over here because we're done with that guy. So the, si the spice mix. Spice mix? Spice mix? Spice mix. Uh, I'm using a really simple spice mix. Now you may think if you're looking at it going like, ah, I don't know if I'm a fan of all those things. Give it a try. Uh, I love doing the whole spice thing because we're gonna toast the whole spices, then we're gonna grind the whole spices. I don't have a fancy spice grinder. 
I use a little $12 blender for every single thing I do from vinaigrettes to making pie, uh, pie filling to, to grinding up my spices. Uh, the spices we're gonna use, Charlotte, are some star anise. Okay. We're using about three pods of star anise. So star anise has a, and Charlotte has a little factoid she'll give you, but star anise is a very more pronounced licorice flavor. Now we're also using fennel seeds, but they both add something different. I love what star anise does. Will you talk a little about star anise? So star anise is actually um, has a really nice, um, like you said, licorice flavor, but it's not the same as anise seed, yes. which has a more predominant or potent flavor than a star anise. Right. Um, but you can, like they're it. interchangeable. Um, they have the same, you know, compound in them, that volatile compound that gives them that licorice flavor. Um, star anise comes from um, like Asia and that area, and it is from an evergreen tree. Evergreen tree. Yes. So I've got three of these. I'm not worried about them being perfectly symmetrical, you know, star anise pods. If you get a half of one, I consider that one. The other thing we have in here is some beautiful green fennel seeds. These are just the untoasted fennel seeds. Once they get toasted, they're gonna look really good. Oops, I'm losing some of my spice mix. That's all right, I'm putting them back in here. Uh, some bay leaves, and I have some juniper berries. So juniper berries is probably one of my biggest secrets when I brine a turkey for the holidays, and we are slowly approaching that time. Juniper berries have that, uh, obviously the juniper berry, most widely known for its uh, role it plays in gin. If you're a, a gin drinker, or you're a gin martini, or a, what is, what is a, Bond is a, James Bond is a, he's a vodka, Never mind. Interestingly, right the Dutch word for juniper is yeah. Jennifer. And Jennifer? that's Jennifer, Jennifer. That's where okay. gin gets its name. Interesting. You're welcome. So if you open a bottle of juniper berries and you were to crack open a bottle of gin, you'd get a very similar smell to it, but you're gonna get a little more of like an herby note out of this. Now, obviously gin has a million other things that go into a lot of other botanicals that make up the gin, but the juniper berry is obviously one of the main, main things of it, so if you're kind of trying to associate. So this would all get toasted in a dry pan. Everything gets toasted till our fennel seeds are a little bit starting to turn like more of a yellow color. The, uh, the bay leaves are starting to get brown. The anise will get a little bit darker and the juniper berries will get a nice oily sheen to them. That gets blended in my blender and then it gets added to my salt and sugar mixture. So the brown so sugar chef, and salt done mash. The whole, you combined everything in a blender. Everything in a blender. Okay. Once it's been toasted, now you can toast it in a, on a, just a dry pan or you can just do the same thing in the oven, just toast it until it's nice and roasted. It'll smell phenomenal in your house. I'm a big fan of using, if you have these dried spices, if you've got like crushed star anise or crushed fennel, whatever it is, that's totally fine if you wanna use those. But I love the flavor you get out of using whole spices. It's so much more pungent. So I always recommend if you can use it. I do not have, again, I don't have a fancy, fancy I'd like to buy a vowel, please, Pat. Let's go with 100, please. It's, uh, I, I don't have a fancy spice grinder. There it is. So just use a blender. And then if you need to get that flavor out of there, because there's a lot of deep flavors, uh, a little vinegar, let it sit in some hot water for about an hour and then wash the dishwasher and it's usually good to go. All right, let me uh I thought for up sure here. you had a separate like coffee grinder that you use for, for everything? herbs only at your house. Very fancy what I do. No, I use the cheapest stuff ever because that's okay. all you need. Why spend so much money on something? It's just, I wouldn't use it anyway. Plus for coffee, I'm like, I just buy the ground coffee. I know that like, it's probably not a good thing, but if I had a fancy coffee machine, I'd let it grind it for me. All right, you're gonna use the entire mixture on this pork belly. We're gonna really coat it and we're gonna flip this over to coat Wait, the I'm bottom sorry, as well. Please go back to that. You don't grind your own coffee beans. I don't. You heard that here. I, uh, I'm learning something you know, about I just, you every I, day. I do a French roast. I'm a pretty okay. simple, you know, okay. at the end, of the end of the day, I'm pretty simple. You know, if I had a fancy spice you know, or a fancy coffee maker, I probably would let it like where the beans come in, I grinds it up and I'd have okay. a cup of coffee. Uh, we want to cook this or we want to let it cure with the fat side, so I'm using a lot. I'm not, this is not a gingerly seasoning. This is like, we're going to cure this bad boy. We're going to cover this in seasoning. I'm going to flip this over again. You can see how much seasoning, that's all right. It's going to come off. It's going to be a little bit messy. That's all right. So the you recipe, want this to thoroughly uh, coat. I have one question. The recipe yes. says um, for three quarters a cup, and you just mentioned one cup. Is that going to make too Sorry. much of a difference? That's three quarters of a cup okay. that I use. Sorry. Right. Yes, just it's three quarters sure. of a cup to half a cup of sugar. Yes. Got it. We want a little sweetness because this is, oh, in essence, what we're doing is dry brining this. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, the, the measurements were off on that. I said, I meant one thing and said another. That's just pretty, clarifying. That's pretty normal, though. Uh, yes, but this is going to sit for a while, two days. So all I'll do here, this is, this is as good as you need to do. Cover it with a little plastic wrap, throw it in the back of your fridge, let it sit for two days, and when it's done, I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like. We'll come out over here, and it looks like this guy. Now this guy 
I should have done the texture test on it, Rob. Dang it. Uh, just to see. Because this is what the pork belly looks like after it's been sitting there for 48 hours. So you can see there's a fair amount of juice that's come off. Now, in all fairness, because I didn't want this sloshing around, I actually dumped out a lot of juice that was in here. You'll actually get a lot more purge than I have in here. I dumped some of mine off. But it's going to, salt is a great extractor, right? So it's going to extract a lot of juice from this pork and it's going to tighten it up pretty well. Again, we're curing this. So you can see this is, this is pretty ingrained on there. It's a little bit tighter. Okay. It has a little bit more of a firm texture. This is ready to be rinsed off. We're gonna rinse it off. We're gonna rinse it really, really well because everything I wanted to have happen to the pork has happened. All the, it smells, first of all, it smells ridiculous. It smells amazing. It has all that juniper and everything. If you're worried about, I'm gonna run over here. You're gonna watch me wash this. So we're if gonna you were gonna do, so essentially that cure, that dry brine, it creates this like really great, like cr crispy, crunchy crust skin, right? So you could essentially yep. do the same thing for duck. Um, you could do absolutely, it for yeah, a great on duck. chicken, something like that. Good on chicken, yeah. And this spice rub is really, really good. Now, for those of you that like to smoke, like you have a barbecue, you're big on smoking things, doing this whole thing, doing the whole process like I just did, and instead of confiting this, throwing this on your smoker would be a ridiculous, ridiculous flavor as well. Because again, you've got some really pungent flavors here that have really kind of locked in to the, uh, to the pork. All right, I'm gonna give this a quick dry. So dry this off really, really well. Just pat it dry as well as you can. That doesn't have to be perfect. So at this point, this is gonna go in the oven. There's nothing else I need to do with this. This is, this is ready to go. So here's, I'm gonna show you this. So we're gonna go over here. So your oven, 225. You're gonna let this sit for four hours. Now, four hours is a sweet spot that I like because I like to cut and sear my pork belly, and I'm gonna show you that later on from the one I already cooked. So if you wanna go longer, like if you wanna like shred this and kind of like have it pull apart for a taco, just cook it for about six hours. It'll definitely start to fall apart around that time. Um, in the smoker, I do the same thing. Maybe two hours, wrap it, we go in the oven, or you can just smoke it for four hours until however it's done the way you like it. Uh, the flavors are amazing. It will not taste like licorice. I know you're probably thinking like, oh, the star anise, all that stuff. I'm worried it's gonna taste like licorice. It will not, I promise you. All right, where's my oil? Well, All fennel right. is, fennel and licorice are, are typically found in like sausage. Correct. Like certain types of sausage. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, and that licorice the, flavor from the star anise is sort of like, um, like Galliano liqueur or like a, a Sambuca. Yeah, right? Galliano, so, good one. Yeah. Yeah, Sambuca is really, that's like. Yeah. I mean, just smell to me kind of like, like that black licorice. Like I don't, I mean, if you like black licorice, hey man go nuts, but I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I don't know where my olive oil is because I used it all. So what I'm doing is what you're seeing now is called improvising. That's me taking all the olive oil that we have. I had a little bit of grapeseed oil. Just, what I want to show you is if you don't have olive oil, you don't want to use it. It's my favorite sound in the world, Charlotte. I may or may not have um, moved that bottle of olive oil. I will take full responsibility. That for is that. okay. It's okay. Cause you know what? We made it happen anyway. Uh, I'm using our HEB butcher not the butcher, the foil, our big barbecue foil, Texas Tough. Stuff is amazing, be careful. It is thick enough to where it can cut you. Wrap it over the top. Again, four hours, 225, let it hang out. I feel like you could put that foil on the roof. Like you could roof a you house have. In fact, with that foil. I can't afford a metal roof, so I'm already in negotiations with Texas Tough to see if I can just roof my entire <laughs> house in it because I feel like, number one, it'll last. And number two, it like just provides me with the, I feel like I get the full HEB experience at that point as well. Because I can say I believe in it because it's on my roof, right? All right, next we're gonna do the, uh, we're gonna do our vinaigrette. Now that that's all gone, oh, we gotta make our, uh, our caramel. So let's gonna make, we're gonna make a caramel sauce. I've got a little, uh, you recognize this? It's a little uh, K&T, nonstick. This is one of our titanium pans, kitchen table. It's a great little pan. It's great for making caramel. So the caramel sauce, Charlotte. This is, you do not have to make the bacon caramel. If you want to just make a caramel sauce, I'll also kind of show you that. But it's a bacon lover's class, so why would I not show you how to make bacon caramel? So it's going to start with about a cup of bacon. We got your recipe in front of you here. So now when I wrote this, I wanted to give you a little bit of insurance because making a caramel from scratch, if you've ever done it, if anybody ever has, give us a shout out and let us know. Just doing it with plain sugar takes a little bit of time. It can be a little bit tricky. And last thing I want to do is get you started down the road and be like, ah, oh, I messed it up or a little bit of water got in there or something happened and it crystallized and it didn't work out. So I'm giving you a little bit of insurance via corn syrup. So we're going to do a little corn syrup, which I think is a good cheating technique as far as I think a lot of pastry chefs would say, like using a little corn syrup, it just gives it a different sugar molecule bond. You can just Google 
the science of why a caramel works with a I could tell sugar. you. Tell me. I could tell you. You so, have the Google machine up, um, the news desk over there. What happens is when you're, when, you're making, um, when you're making a caramel sauce or your candy of any sort, right? Right. Your, um, dilute, or your, what's the word? Disaccharide? Um, when you Diluted. Di you dissolve the sugar, right? Diving. You're dissolving Danny the sugar DeVito. in a solution, right? <laughs> and as the liquid evaporates, right, it's more concentrated, more concentrated, more concentrated, right? And so at, at some point, like, it's going to start to cool. And as it cools, exactly. it's sort of an unstable mixture, right? Because it's, it's so saturated. So the sucrose molecules want to go back together, right? They want to, like, go back and, like, form, like, a little Lego wall. Yeah, they so want to go to their home, right? They want to stay... But if you add in something like corn syrup that is mainly glucose instead of sucrose, the molecule sizes are different. And so it sort of um, creates traffic. And so all of the shapes, the puzzle pieces, or those Lego blocks can't go back together very well. So Good example you're of Lego absolutely blocks. right. It pr sort of prevents that crystallization. Also, Just buys you some insurance. all of that wonderful fat from that bacon is going to oh. do the exact same thing. It's going to give you some more of that insurance. Exactly. So that's why we're. That's also why we're doing this. So if you wanted to make a basic caramel sauce, you could follow the exact same recipe. The only difference is you'd want to double the amount of butter by the time you got to it because there's a lot of fat that's going to render off our bacon. Now the bacon I'm using, you can use any bacon you want. I happen to go to this one because I just think it's a great bacon. Um, this guy right here is our little uh, dry cured center cut bacon. It literally in this package, depending on how big they are or how many, you know, how the size of the bacon itself, it usually ends up being about a cup to a cup and a half of diced bacon. So it's perfect for most of these recipes. And it's great. It's a dry cure. It's really, really good. It won't stay up. Um, yes, it will. Quick question. Yes. Um, we have a Facebook viewer who um, has a question about the pork belly. Is it face? Is it uh, face? Fat side up. Fat side up. Thank fat you. Fat side up. Let it, let it in both ways. When we cure it, fat side up. And then when we cook it, you want to go fat side up. Because we're going to cover it with just enough oil. So I want to make sure that if we, were, if we were to flip it on the cut side or the, you know, the flesh side, we don't want that to dry out. So if we flip it over, there's plenty of fat to protect that if it starts to render down. So we're not gonna worry about it. All right, I'm gonna take my dirty cutting board over here for now. And I have a new cutting board. Ta-da! Ta-da! All right, so the bacon caramel sundae. So it starts with our sugar, the bacon. Now, if you think this looks weird, you're not wrong because I tried to do this recipe the first time I was, when I was creating this, I made it. I was like, you know, it seems weird just adding everything together. So what you want to do is, if you decide to cook it like I did beforehand, you'll burn it. By the time the caramel starts to caramelize and do its thing and actually become a caramel sauce, the bacon is obliterated. So you really have to start them at the exact same time. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's a quick trick. Whenever you try to get honey into it, like every recipe that calls, this drives me nuts, and I do it because I write the recipes, is the, when it's a tablespoon or whatever, like of honey or corn syrup or whatever it is, you're like, it's always so hard to get it out. I always do this, whether it's a, half, a tablespoon, half a, half a cup, quarter cup, spray with a little nonstick spray, and that way it comes out so much easier, any type of thing, because that way you can actually That's get a gonna proper work. measure. Wait for it, wait for it. It's just got enough. Wait, it's almost gone. Can you see from the top, you see it? Almost gone. Oh. It's that little edge, that How little edge. That? There it was, that was the last remaining bit. That's it, again, that's our insurance. This is gonna go over medium heat. Now I have a 17,000, 170,000 BTU stove here that we're using. Uh, in my house, typically I like to go over medium high heat. If I put it over medium high heat here, it'd be caramel in about five, five minutes and it would probably burn up. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna let that go. Now we're gonna watch this, Charlotte, help me remember that's over there. Okay. I want to show you what this looks like because when you get, if you've never made caramel before, if there's anybody that's never made caramel and you're attempting this right now, I want to definitely want to hear from you because I want to, we're going to, we were in this together. I got you. This was made yesterday. This is the exact same sauce following the exact same recipe. So I want to show you, look at how caramelized the bacon is. If you started the bacon early because you're like, no, I want to get it really crispy, I promise you it will be burnt to a crisp. This is like just to where it's crispy enough to where it's sauce and flavor, but you're not getting all that burnt. And this is what we want on our bacon caramel sundaes. This is what this is. It's still pourable enough, like I could turn it. It's been in the fridge overnight. I let it sit out at room temp, and this is what that looks like. Tompkins, what if we put that on a ham and roasted it? Glaze it, it over. Glaze <laughs> it for the holidays. 
Why don't we? Somebody needs to try that Somebody. and then uh, tag us on Facebook and just say, here's my bacon glazed caramel ham. Oh my God. Uh, all right, you need a good spatula for this, the good heat resistant, just kind of give it a little turn. Again, this is gonna go for a little while, so don't go crazy thinking like, oh my gosh, it's, it's bubbling, it's weird, it's turning colors. I'm gonna show you all the different phases through the sky cam, Rob's Ooh, gonna show you the whole Marie thing. Marie says, put it on a cheesecake. <laughs> See, that's another thing. We're just doing it on a Sunday. How boring is right? that? Right? Um, quick question about our yes. um, pork belly. If yep. we were gonna smoke this guy, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't put in the oil. No, you would not. You would just go straight from rinsing it, pat it dry, and then go right into your smoker and that's all you need to do. It'd be good to go. Because yeah, all we're doing is once you've cured it, it's basically ready to be smoked. And then you'd have like a really, really just spice bacon. Just like, uh, good, good spice. Okay. How was that? Half cream. Uh, uh. <laughs> so like, uh. <laughs> no, the, no, no. Uh, what do you need for the caramel sauce? You have to have butter and we're gonna use some heavy cream. So I'm using a little bit more heavy cream than I think you need, but also because we're using this caramel for a sundae, I wanna make sure that it's pourable enough and not so thick that you're like trying to, so all I have to do to my caramel that's been overnight sitting in the fridge is throw in the microwave, microwave safe container, 20 seconds to get it loose and then just it Now, I'm gonna make this loose enough to where the one we're gonna do together, you'll actually be able to see me kind of do it, but there's a, there's a couple tricks in here that you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, something's happening, I think I'm doing it wrong, I promise you, all these chemical reactions that are happening are normal and it's gonna look weird, but stick with me because you got this and it's all gonna be fine. All right. That is starting. Our pork belly in the, uh, in the oven, that's going. That's gonna take four hours. I'm assuming you guys will stick around. We'll have some prize giveaways or whatever it is in a couple hours from now, we'll do it. Nope, we're not gonna do that at all. We're gonna keep going here. All right, the olive oil ranch dressing. So, uh, you know, I was talking to Rob. He does all the, everything that you, the fact that you're seeing all of us right now, Charlotte's at a news desk and this is actually being broadcast is all due to a small team of people who are magicians. And uh, we decided that we don't really need to have a top for a blender. In this, uh, in this kitchen because number one, we think it's more fun to show you open faced from the top, but number two, we've seemed to so far, knock on both woods, Famous block, last words. Uh, that we've had <laughs> nothing really go crazy and spill out. Now, when I'm using my little blender at home, sometimes I have to make sure I use the top. So I'm not saying don't use your top, but I'm saying here, we're throwing caution to the wind because we think it's more fun. We're gonna make an olive oil ranch dressing, which is gonna go with our wedge salad. So Charlotte. Yes. The wedge salad we're gonna make. The wedge salad. Bacon. Got to have bacon. Oh, Gorgonzola. Feta cheese. Yes. If you don't like blue cheese. Charlotte, what is in blue cheese that makes it blue? It's actually uh, oh, the, sorry, the mold is um, yes. penicillium uh, mold. 40. It's mold. So it doesn't produce any toxins and it's completely harmless. And exactly. And it gives it that beautiful flavor. But I get it. Color. Because it's mold, I think blue cheese can be a little polarizing. So the way I'm going to make the salad later is we're going to combine the cooked bacon, the feta cheese, and the blue cheese together. If you're at all like squeamish about blue cheese, I do want to introduce you to my friend, the HEB blue cheese, because it is probably the most mild, mild, yeah, I would say safest blue cheese that doesn't have a lot of the actual blue, like mold striations throughout the entire thing. Good, where'd that word come from? It's, Who they're knows? referred to as blue veined cheese. Blue veined cheese, yes. right. And it's a little milder than like this guy for sure. This is the sol Soltor, this is a Gorgonzola Dulcina, it's a little different. It's a little sweeter, but it has a lot more of that actual mold in it versus this, which is a little milder. So if you're just giving this a try, I would consider this more of a kind of a great starting block for it would be this HB crumble blue cheese. All right, we're gonna make a ranch to go with this. Now the recipe on the actual website and the one if you print it out, if you're online working with us, watching with us. Uh, by the way, I didn't even say it. Those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. We, we love having you guys. Just remember on Facebook, if you are watching, you can click on the things that you see that we put up, the icons, different pans, different, different things. You can cook along with us. You can go right to the website, you can purchase them and you can start cooking from your house as we speak. And you have to wait for however long it takes to get delivered clearly, but you know, you get the picture. Uh, but that way we're gonna, you get it all, you can see it. And then those of you that wanna sign up for the classes, uh, you can always go to hb.com slash class. You can sign up and you can get into our Zoom and there's uh, extra features in there as well, but we're glad you're here. All right, a little ranch dressing. So here's how this is gonna work. I have some sour cream. Now a basic ranch dressing, if you're gonna make it, typically is like a little sour cream, buttermilk, may or may not be mayonnaise, 
Sometimes they do a little, uh, the homemade, or not the homemade, the spice packet, right, that has the, whether it's Hidden Valley Ranch or the H-E-B style, has that MSG, that little seasoning packet. I think what the biggest thing about ranch seasoning is the MSG. Yes, can we just stop calling it ranch and just call it MSG dressing? <laughs> it's delicious. Monosodium glutamate. It. It's the glutamates in that that give you that, like, holy cow, why do I keep eating it, whether it's broccoli or with your french it's fries or whatever umami. it is. Umami. It's the umami flavor. It, it, it kind of does that fifth flavor profile for us. So it's really, really good. Now, I can smell this cooking. Can you see this? So I'm going to swirl this. I'm going to go back over here. Ooh. I'm smelling. I'm using my senses. So I'm going to turn this down. It's definitely going fast. So this is going to keep going. Don't get crazy. Like, don't think like right now, like, uh oh, is it, is it turning? Not yet. I'm going to show you exactly what to look for. We're getting close to this. It's starting to like, you can see the sugar is kind of starting to boil. So that I've got really a little is bit a good lower. a pan for caramel. It's a fantastic, these really K&T pans. That's a good pan for that. I mean, they're, they're pretty, pretty awesome. All right, sour cream goes in first into our blender. Now, uh, this ranch that we're going to do, it's an olive oil ranch. I just, I really like olive oil. Uh, and I did set aside the olive oil thief. I did set aside my olive oil for this, so we do have olive oil. I have, I I've got it ready to go. I may or may not have been making a snack. Fine. I am sorry. You were trying to make a point. You want me to use something else? I get it. All right. I have my green onions. Uh, you like green onions, Charlotte? Love them. Big fan. You mind if I put a little more in? Do you call them green onions or do you call them scallions? Clearly, you call them green onions. I like, uh, you know, it depends on my mood. Really? Okay. Sometimes I like to call them scallions. I think scallions sounds a little bit more... Fancy? Yeah, it's a little fancier, but if it's just kind of like a, you know, just a basic kind of rustic dish, I don't want to be too fussy about it, I'll call them green onions. Okay. Both mean the exact same thing. I just give these a little wipe. I'm not too fussy about my vegetables. They're good to go. Give them a little rinse under some water. All right, uh, just a rough chop here. I'm going to use a whole bunch, about a half a cup. This ends up being closer to probably three quarters of a cup, but that's all right. I like a good amount of herb in this. Now, this is going to turn a little green, the herbs in this. We got it from fresh dill going in. We've got some thyme. Now, uh, mm. my friend Katie uh, got me some fresh thyme, so I love the fact that we're going to use a little fresh thyme in this. Uh, dried thyme a little bit stronger than fresh. I like to use a little fresh instead uh, because like of that. The fresh herbs in this dressing are so good. Yeah, and they're a little, they're more tender, right? So they, they are. they're not as. And a third twiggy. of a cup of the dill is about, yes, you're absolutely right, is about the whole package of dill. And I throw in a. I don't mind the tender stems. I think we've talked about this before if you've watched the class. I don't mind tender stems. Anything that's bigger than like these guys or a little thicker, they're not going to blend up. They're going to kind of actually cause it to be a little weird. This right here, this little guy that bends, he's good. I'll throw him in there. All right, thyme. Definitely don't want to put the thyme in like this. We want to do it a little bit easier here. I can smell. Ooh, I can that. smell the caramel. Rob, how's it going over there? Got a shot of the, uh, the caramel. The tops here. I like the tender tops of time. I think it's fine to get in there. The I'm tender tops of time? Off. Tender tops of time. <laughs> Say that 17 times fast. She went on something. All right, here we go. That's about, that's good. I just made a mess with my time over here. Mess with my time. All right, that is all done. Our water, garlic, lemon juice, the only things remaining. So my red wine vinegar, I love red wine vinegar. This also needs a lot of cracked pepper. Now, I'm using water. Why water in the recipe? Because I want to make sure that I have enough liquid. This is going to get really, really thick. I'm going to add olive oil. I've got the sour cream in there. It's going to get really, really like, it's a ranch dressing, right? It's going to get a little thick. I can, I can hear it. I can hear you bubbling. I can here. smell that bacon caramel. I can hear it. All right, that's still going. It looks really, really good. I'm going to let that go for a second because we have a, I have a whole thing I'm going to show you. About two tablespoons of lemon juice, the water I was talking about. The oh, water in this is going to help it kind of, two tablespoons. if we added, you saw that two tablespoons? <laughs> it was exactly, I have a, I have a <laughs> it snapped it. Every, in my mind, it was like, click, click, there's two tablespoons right there. Cut it off. Uh, a little more lemon juice isn't going to hurt anything, right? Um, the water is going to help thin this out. And if I added too much of the acid, so if I doubled up on the, on the red wine vinegar, then you're going to have a ranch dressing that where you eat it, you're going to have a like, a reaction where your mandible is immediately going to like attack you back here and you're going to feel like that you're you do like this it's like it locks up everything and that's not where you want to be never where you want to be all right this is still going we're going to blend this up are you ready rob overhead cam here we go all right i turned it on low last time when i did this rehearsal it was on high everything is fine now i'm fine rob's fine everybody's good all right here's how this works Great low story. as i back up Salt, pepper, a lot of good, lot of good amount of pepper in your ranch dressing. 
big pinch of salt. Again, we're, we don't have the MSG. There we go. See it? Here we go. Blending up. It's going to start to get nice and light green. It's spitting a little bit. Nice Hold it together. Text. All right, olive oil. Nice and slow, even, form that emulsion. This is risky. We are on the edge, living on the edge for your entertainment. Here we go. It's actually all right. I think we're going to make it. Statistically speaking, cup and a half extra virgin olive oil. For a splatter. Oh, it's good. It worked. It worked out well. It worked out well. All right. Dressing is done. <laughs> I was waiting for it to go poof, like it does that little. <laughs> I mean, I was pop. saying while the blender was on, statistically speaking, you're due for. I, I, I am. It'll be, uh, I'm sure it'll be something more catastrophic, though. When my, like my, I'll be chopping and the, the corner of my finger will chop off and I'll be like, uh, oh, wait, I'll be no, right I back with this commercial break, although we don't have one. All right. Dressing goes in. So I've already made a dressing, but I'm going to use the one today that I made earlier because it's already kind of set up. So I want to show you the difference in these. So the one we just made, a little more jiggly. See how this is kind of set up? That's what I want. That's the ranch we're going for. So I'm going to let that sit. This guy's good. Back in the fridge they go. Now we're going to start making the Parmesan cream for the dressing here. And then we're going to work out the wedge salad, the wedge salad. So Parmesan cream, look at this. Can you see our caramel sauce? This is going fast. It's going fast over here. All right, caramel sauce. All right, look at this. See how this is starting to get there? So the color is starting to change. I'm going to go just, Charlotte, like a minute longer okay. on that. Like one more minute. You got a timer on it? I do. I could time it myself, but then I feel like we're, we're in this together if, if, if we, you know, if something happens. So about one more minute, but you can see how the color has gone from kind of a lighter to darker color. We're almost there. Butter's going to go in. We're going to whisk that in. Then we're going to add the heavy cream. We're going to turn off the heat and let it sit. And that's what we're going to use over the top of our ice cream which I need to get out of the oven. All right, cheese rinds. So you can find these at most HEBs. We'll cut these off. You're a your local cheese specialist at the deli. Uh, they may be able to, to get you some. If you can't find any out that's on display in your local HEB, they can probably cut you some off. Or just go to any of our regular just wedges of Parmesan cheese and just cut that off yourself. And that, that's all you're going to use. I'm going to use one. I got some cream already going. I got a cup of cream. So we're going to make the uh, carbonara. Charlotte, will you talk a little bit about carbonara? Because you earlier... She was saying it's not a traditional carbonara, and that's true. We are chefifying our carbonara a little bit, so I'm gonna let this cheese rind. Now, why the cheese rind, first of all? The cheese rind because the cheese itself, I don't wanna melt in this. The cheese rind has all that great concentrated salt and cheesy flavor, so I just wanna infuse our cream with a little bit of that flavor. So I'm gonna turn this up to about medium high, got a nice little cane tea, nonstick little thing here. So I'm just gonna let that kind of infuse, put light on. All right, talk, talk to me about the carbonara. It's not traditional, I know. This is not. Well, traditionally, um, you would not put a cream in True. a carbonara. So it's thickened with the egg yolks and the cheese and the pasta water, right? But exactly. in this regard, I think that adding the cream is a safeguard, especially for people that have never um, made a, like... Kind a, of an emulsified... Exactly, emulsified, like with an egg yolk, right? So I think this is a safeguard and gives you some wiggle room. Absolutely. If you want to try a... Um, you know, a creamless, more oh. traditional carbonara, you would just eliminate the uh, cream and you would- Get rid of the cream. Mix in those egg yolks um, off the heat, yeah. And I'm doing, all right, check this out. Here we go, I'm turning on my pasta water. I'm gonna get nice and hot. It was already kind of hot. I'm gonna season it like the ocean. So you see this color. You see how it's all kind of a, a mass. It's all kind of collecting together. This is where I'm gonna go with my butter. And the butter bubbles aren't as like big and rapid, Exactly, right? they're okay. kind of slowing down because there's not a lot of liquid left. So butter's gonna go in, you're gonna see like, this is where all the chemical reactions may scare you. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's separating, it's oily, it's gathering, don't worry about it. Just keep going. I promise you, this will turn out, it'll turn out just fine. This is the third one I've made today, following the exact same recipe. All right, so that's gonna start to melt. This is where, I've got it over like low heat. I'm gonna add the cream in, and this is gonna go right off the heat. So I'm gonna let that come up to a bubble, you can see the last of my Butter starting to kind of melt there. Going, it's going, it's going. There we go. All right. But it is a little bit, un it's kind of breaking, right? You can kind of see that there's a little bit of like the oil gathering. Just wait. Because when I add this, it's going to really get funky. 
I'm going to hit the heat up just a little bit. I'm going to add that. So now you're going to watch. The cream is going to start to look like, uh-oh. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I ruined it. It's all broken. It's crazy. I can feel lumps in the corner. I'm telling you, stick with it. This is where you want to switch from your spatula to a whisk. And just on the heat for a second, you're going to feel like literally as I'm whisking, I can feel little bits kind of in there. That's all that stuff trying to get emulsified here. So I'm going to let that go. And we're there. This, this is shot it. is mesmerizing. I like I'm glued. You can to it. see it all kind of come together. Yeah. So you're going to see it's very thin. If you want to cut down on the amount of cream, you can. I wouldn't suggest it, though, because especially for this, you want something that's pourable and something that's really, really nice and kind of silky. And if you go too much, if you don't have enough liquid, you don't have enough, it can kind of like it'll seize up. And then you're kind of chewing on the caramel. And that's a different, totally different program. All right. So you can see, though, look at our bacon. All right. Our bacon cooked up perfectly. It just stayed together with the sugar. They all came to the same temp. I could have actually gone a little bit darker with this uh, right here, Charlotte, to be totally honest with you. Could have gone I a little bit darker. I think it looks perfect from where could I'm have, sitting. But that's OK, because I have two other ones we can go to. All right, the carbonara. How am I doing on time? All right. You're doing My great. heat is on. The carbonara I'm going to make is definitely more kind of like Chef Ford. Again, like, like she said, not a traditional one, but we're going to add a little red wine vinegar. We're adding heavy cream. Soaked with the Parmesan rind. Again, this is all about amping up all this flavor. So I'm going to add bacon. Also not really traditional, but they do it in a lot of things because if you can't find pancetta, you can always use bacon. But I happen to have pancetta, which if you go to your local HEB, you may be able to find pancetta that is already pre-diced like this. Otherwise, ask your local HEB deli partner to say, hey, can I, do you guys have any of the, the pancetta? And they can probably cut it. I would just recommend doing it on a 9 or a 10. And that way you can just dice it yourself. This is already pre-diced. I found this in the deli at my local HEB. And that's good to go. Make the work easier, a little easier for you. All right. What do they typically use? The, the jowl? The well, you can use, yeah, the guan guanciale. Guanciale. That's different, though, because I think guanciale is used in a lot of different dishes. Um, but that's what they typically use in a carbonara. Guanciale carbonara. is really, really yeah. good, though. It's the pork jowl in Italian. So I'm going to start with this, a little olive oil. I saved a little of my olive oil. Oh, you found it. Hot pan. It was hiding. I had just enough set aside. All right, we're going to caramelize those guys. The egg yolks, my biggest recommendation when you're going to do all this, have your egg yolks sitting at room temp. Reason being is you want to make sure that you don't add cold eggs to a hot pan. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Because otherwise, this hot pan, the eggs are cold. It's going to immediately curdle. And you'll have a little bit, not that it's bad. It just may, it just may not be as visually appealing. This is going to render down. I like to get this pretty crispy before I start adding in the shallot and garlic. And then I have already saved some pasta water. In fact, I already made, I'm going to put this over here. This guy is done. So if you're making your caramel sauce along with me, so look at that. Beautiful, done, set aside. Our cream bubbling, look at that. I'm going to turn that off. It's got enough heat to kind of just sit there for now. I'll turn down If you've oil. never had carbonara, I like. So good. This is like that wonderful, like super creamy, rich dish that has these little like speckled with these like pieces of crispy like pork. But exactly. it reminds me of like those dishes they like, those pasta dishes they like make in the Parmesan wheel. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. Where they they like, yeah, like get they it hot. Yeah, yeah, that's cool too. Oh, so good. Where they would put like truffles and stuff in it yeah. where you did the whole thing. So there's a lot of salt happening. There's also so much richness in this. Because, yes, we have the bacon, we have the pancetta, we have the heavy cream with the Parmesan rind in there. We're kind of like infusing all this flavor. So in order to kind of like take back some of the richness that we have, I'm going to add a little red wine vinegar to deglaze this. So what that's going to do is a little red wine vinegar is going to kind of a little bit of acid that's going to kind of like just offset some of that like unctuous fat. I hate that word. It's the perfect why, word why do I what you're... Word? But it it's a, like a fatty. It's a fat, that it fatness. It is. That's exactly what it is. It's that offsets it. So I have a little, I have a little bit of my... Uh, my red wine vinegar right there. So now why did I, it just calls for six cloves of garlic in the recipe. Why did I not say dice them up? I just feel like in this kind of a dish, I like it to be a little rusty. You can see when I crush my garlic cloves, I mince my, my shallots, but I crush the garlic just with a knife flat. And then I threw it in there because I kind of like those little bits of the garlic. Uh, when they're fried up and like they're gonna get a little bit of a California tan on these, they're gonna get that nice like kind of soft garlic flavor, a little toasted garlic flavor versus like that just like in your face raw garlic. All right, so you can see that's working. As that's working, Charlotte, before we finish this all up, yes. my water's boiling. Yes. Let's go ahead and cook up my pasta. Yes. I need a nine minute timer. Nine minutes on this guy. Okay. 
What pasta is that, boss? My favorite way to open boss? pasta. Uh, nine minutes on the pasta. When it goes in, all you're gonna do, we want this to be a little bit on the al dente side. Now the package instructions, I think, say nine to 11 minutes, or maybe it's 10 to 12 minutes. I can't remember what it says. But you want this to be just enough to where when we add it to the pasta, it's gonna finish cooking in the pasta. It's gonna Timer's soak up going. some of that flavor. It's exactly what we want. All right, this is going. All right, my wedge salad, let's do this. But what pasta did you put in there? Bucatini. Oh, I didn't even talk about bucatini. I know. Come on, man. Come on. I just slammed it. That's my favorite way to open pasta, and I'll show it to you again. Uh, bucatini is like a bigger spaghetti noodle with a little hole in the end of it. Just imagine like if they took a piece of linguine and kind of rolled it and glued it in on itself. It's got a little hole in the center. This is like fantastic kids' pasta for eating because it's a little bit thicker, as you'll see. You'll see, and it's got it just it's fantastic. And it like even if it's just like butter, salt, and pepper for like kids, this is a fantastic pasta. The way I love to open long pasta. Straight down. It's my favorite way to do it. But like, because it has that little hole all, that runs the length of it, like all that like delicious All the sauce soaks up, absolutely. Like, and this is a perfect pasta if we're gonna add a little bit of that cream in there because then it's just gonna go into that like- It's gonna soak up everything. All the way through and you're just gonna have this delicious Parmesan flavored pasta thing happening. Ugh. Yep. All right, the cream is turned off. I'm going to my wedge salad, it's time. Let's put it all together here. I'm also gonna show you my pork belly, which I seared off because I really wanna make sure that you get a, I'm gonna grab a really tiny cutting board for the last little bit here. I really wanna show you the pork and once it's done, how it looks, because the recipe calls for you to let it sit on the counter for at least half an hour, or an hour, I should say, and then let it sit in their fridge so it kind of solidifies. Reason why we do that, you see my pasta boiling here, it's all right. It's good, turn this down. The reason why we want to do that is because I like to have it kind of gel a little bit and kind of solidify. And that's when you get that like congealed, like when you slice it, it's so good. And yeah. then you sear it and it gets really crispy. So I talked about the blue cheese, the feta cheese, and the bacon. You chop them all up, or they're already chopped because they're crumbled, and then you mash it together. Reason because I like to mash it because I want everything to stay together. So if I was to build this blue cheese, or to build the wedge salad, let me get my plate here. You want your salad now? I do. Before my meal, Done. yes, please. Done. Let's do a little salad. We're going to do a little salad now. Salad course is on its way out. Okay. My bacon is going. Okay, really quickly. Yes. How do you feel about it when people break the pasta before they put it in the pot? That's a, I mean, however you want to eat it, right? Doesn't bother All me. Right. I don't care. Heard it here first. Folks. I mean, I, I will typically sometimes break it up. All right, you see this? You see my mixture here? This is getting, I got that, you can see the kind of the, gar the golden oh garlic God, color. Oh smells amazing. We're good. Now, red wine vinegar goes in. We're gonna deglaze. Holy cow. <laughs> you get that first little whiff, it'll do it. So you see how it's gonna cook off, it's gonna evaporate really, really quick. But what it did was it left a nice little acid hint to the bacon, the garlic, and the shallot. As I'm moving and you're, I'm talking and you're trying to hear. So this is almost ready to go with everything else. Our pasta's still going. You set a timer for my pasta? I did, I won't Whew. let you down. You have five minutes and 46 so seconds. So scared that that something was gonna happen. All right, my iceberg is already prepped. I'm just gonna cut into four big pieces here. So the reason why, I think I was telling you a little bit earlier, reason why I like to mash all this together, the bacon, the blue cheese, and the feta cheese. Again, if you don't like blue cheese, you wanna sub in a cheddar cheese, just sub in something different, whatever you like. I like to mash it because when you're going to eat this, we're gonna kind of brush the dressing on it, the ranch. So it's gonna be really thick and it's gonna kind of sit in all these little nooks and crannies of the iceberg, which is again why I like using iceberg for wedge. It's gonna kind of hold all that. Just like the pasta is gonna hold our sauce, the wedge is gonna hold up all that dressing. But I want, when you go to eat this, you wanna eat it all together. I feel like when chefs design recipes and the way you do things, you wanna experience everything together. And so as we're eating this, you wanna have the blue cheese, which has a little bit of that like spike in the the mold or whatever you want to call it, but it has that, it has that flavor and I think that's super, it's super important. All right, pasta Wait a water. minute, it just occurred to me. You don't have to play the like stab the bacon game or like try to like scoop it onto your fork. It's just exactly. kind of. Exactly. Oh, the cream genius. goes in, this is gonna simmer. Now I want to show you what happened to my Parmesan rind. Can I show you that real fast? Is this is what happened to the Parmesan rind. So it's softened, right? So we got to cook. I don't know if you can see that in the, see how it kind of like, it can kind of, it's like a little moldable. Yeah. Ooh, look, look, look. <laughs> so 
So that's going to reduce. I'm going to turn this down just a second because I'm still on target with where we're at with our pasta here. So I just want to make sure. So yeah, it was when you're eating it, you want to have everything together. And so in order to get this all together, I have some smoked almonds. So now typically you can use these smoked almonds, which the recipe calls for. However, HEB happens to have a fantastic product. If you've been in the uh, salty snacks area, we have these great different flavored of these almonds. There. And if you're on Facebook, you can actually click the link. It's the HEB smoked jalapeno almonds. So why not have the smoked almond with a little jalapeno flavor? Now I'm gonna first one's gonna tell you, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to spice. So you can absolutely use the regular smoked almonds, but this I would call very mild spice. Like it's just got a very mild. So I would say this is safe for, safe for kids to eat, I think. And I'm concluding myself in that because I've got the spice tolerance of most children. All right, in order to crush some almonds or to chop almonds, this is really tough to chop almonds just like this because then they can fly everywhere. They fly off the board. Make it easy on yourself. Just give them a little light tap, side of your knife. Never here, always here. <laughs> <laughs> But just give them a little light crush and then it's easier because you get a little more of a flat surface and you'll have less of them kind of going all over the place. Leave it a little rustic, back in the container here. Get another container. And this is the, uh, this is the blue cheese gorgonzola. But you didn't mix the, the, mix, the nuts don't go in the mixture, the cheese Just over the top. Okay. I feel like Got every it. wedge needs to have some element of crunch. Yes, lettuce is crunchy. However, we need to make sure that we've got enough kind of going on. All right. I love a, a steakhouse wedge. I'm yeah, it's kind of a cool, I mean, you know, what's not to love about a wedge salad, right? Like, iceberg is so cool and crisp. It is. It's and... always crispy, unless it's rotten, and then it's not crispy, but usually it's always crispy. All right, a little bit of our dressing here. Let me make this easier. I know I I've got long arms. a lot arms. of dressing on mine, please. A lot of dressing? All right, yeah. so here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we go. A smear, smattering. Again, it's a pretty thick wedge of lettuce. Give it a good smattering on both sides here. Again, see the dressing? I kind of want you cleans. to just dip it into that blue cheese you bacon mixture. <laughs> you want me to like, go like this? Like Kinda. the toppings, like at a marble slab creamery? And how many sprinkles would you like? All the sprinkles. All. <laughs> I'll just I'm sorry, sir, is there a number? of blue cheese and bacon, please. And again, if you're not a fan of blue cheese, you don't have to use that one. I'm telling you, try the H-E-B one because it's, it's mild enough to where I think it'll be a uh, It'll be a good thing for you. I just messed up my plates. My plate's a disaster, chef. No, it's beautiful. Hang on. Wait for it. Wait it's for rustic, it. chef. It's also our word for lazy. All right, here we go. So I'm going to just kind of press. See, everything stays together. Come on. I was thinking of you guys when I did this, because I'm like, man, nobody likes everything just falling off in pieces. The olive this oil will ranch stay. is literally. <laughs> it's glue. Glue. It's glue. It's cheesy I'm telling bacon you. glue. But that way, like, look, it's all, like, it's all there. It's all done. And then here's the nuts over the top. And then there's our, get out of town. There's your wedge. Boom. That looks wedge. amazing. All right, this goes out of the way. Let's clear off this. I want to show you the pork because it's really, really important. Let's get the pasta in. Has my timer gone off yet, Chef? Um, not yet, Chef. Ooh, you have 51 seconds. 51 seconds? 51 seconds. All right, where are my big tongs? My big tongs, right over here. Let's see how we're doing here. It's very hot. This is what, did you see that? Pretend like you didn't see it and we'll do a, we'll do a retake. This is uh, very hot. This is how you, how do you check when spaghetti's done? It's done. That's what they said, right Charlotte? That's yep, the way you do it? Yeah, that's it. Right from the pot, in there, a little bit of water, not a big deal, right into our pan here. Oh, Bring that up to a simmer. Oh, you're not gonna strain it? Nope, straight Man. in. Straight in the water, a little pasta water is not going to hurt it. Right in here. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to serve it right in kitchen? the pan. So what does the pasta water do and why are we adding pasta water? So pasta water is starchy, right? It cooked, it cooked the pasta. Timer. Holy timer. cow, there's my timer. So it cooked the pasta in, our, in the water. And so all that great starch from our pasta, especially the bronze cut pasta, is a lot of great starch. It's usually a rough dye cut when they cut that pasta. Just the durum wheat, semolina, and water, typically. But if you want to go back and look at the YouTube channel, check out Charlotte's Pasta Clash. You can add your homemade pasta to this. Simple Ooh. and easy. So we're just going to cook this for a quick second. So you see how, see how bubbly that got? Off the heat. You ready for this? This is fast. It's going to be really fast. we got to watch. We're going to go quick. Egg yolks right on top. 
And that's it. There they go. Just really, really rich, really, really simple. This is where I'd add my pecorino cheese. I'm off the heat right now. There's no heat on. All that good bacon, all this. Come on, look at how thick and beautiful that sauce is. I'm so hungry. You know what I don't think I did? I did season my water. Woof! That's a force of habit. I was like, I don't think I seasoned it in front of these folks. I don't think I did, but I had already pre-done it. I took care of it. You want your water salty. I don't want to have to add a bunch of other stuff to it. I'd rather just like, let's just serve it on the table, right? Make it easy. All right, pasta, done, lid on. Hot food stays hot. This is done, caramel sauce is done. What am I missing? Pork belly. The pork belly, you're going to take it out. So I'm going to take it out right now. Like... You ready for this? Yes. The I've piece never been de resistance, ready. what we showed you. I'm going to flip this over. Our almonds, clean side. I'm going to wipe my knife off. What I keep on my cutting board is a sanitized rag, if you're asking. It's clean. I make sure it's all ready to go. Our pork belly. So this has been two days in a cure. I'm going to get a nice hot pan here, Charlotte, because I want to show you how beautiful this is. Are you going to make this for me? Heck yeah. Yay. So I have the pork belly. You see this? Look at how much the volume after we cured it, all that purge that kind of came out of it, and then we confit it. And then this was done today. After it cooled for an hour, I put it in the fridge, let it kind of set up. And now it's this beautiful like piece of pork that's ready to go. So let me show you this and I'm going to build my Sunday. Am I doing all right on time? Yeah, it's Whew, man. I'm telling you, five like things. 10 minutes, man. You're doing great. Five things. We're so fast, we're so fast. I'm telling you, it doesn't take a lot to make, to put dinner on the table in a, in a very quick amount of time. But the fact that I'm doing it in an hour and we're doing this many things, we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna cut it in half. Oh man, if you could smell this. I'm gonna cut this little edge off. Show us the, I'll use that. Give us the, show us the inside. Come on, come on, come on. So there's Ooh. our, so fully cooked, ready to go. All I'm gonna do is, I like, when I do a piece of pork belly, I like to, typically what I'll do is I'll cut these in half like this, and then I'll sear off a piece. So I'm gonna do, which piece do I like? I like this piece a little better. So I'm gonna basically take it, and I'm gonna cut it, you like a little thicker? Look at a thick I wedge. Um, okay. Nice thick piece One like more. this. I need two please, thanks. I'll do, see how many, how many can I fit in a pan? Maybe three, maybe four. Just do it all now since you're here. It's May as well, all right. <laughs> I do not need to add any fat to this pan. Can you see? where this spice mixture and that curing salt kind of put a nice little skin, a nice little kind of crust on this. It's gonna be delicious when it cooks up. So, here a little sizzle. Nice flat piece of pork belly. I'm telling you, if you were to do this, if you're, if you're a person that likes to use your smoker, if you were to do this in your smoker, you will be amazed at how good it is. And just those flavors. Again, you could add anything you wanted to. You could add a little bit of your, uh, you know, any kind of seasoning you'd want to do, you can add anything else. It would work very, very well. But I feel like with that spice mix, it's so good. All right, this goes back in the, uh, in oh, the fridge here. Oh, this would be, like, you could at this point put, like, um, an Asian-inspired sauce on there, yes. right? And kind of, you could put the bacon Absolutely. caramel on that right now, and it would be so good. I mean, mix. yes to everything you just said. Yes. All right, yes. you ready? Carbonara. I'm going to move all this out of the way. The juniper, they've done their thing. I'm just gonna serve this family style. Is that all right? Can I do that? Anybody get mad? No. I mean, this K and T pan. Wow. Ta-da! Oh, oh, uh, not yet. I gotta make the Sunday. I gotta make the Sunday. Okay, all right, on, our bacon it. caramel Sunday. Charlotte, you got me two of the cutest little glasses over here. Aren't those cute? My one criticism of this, it's not even a criticism, it's just not quite big enough. But I'm gonna make do, it's about portion size, right? Portion, yes. portion, portion. I mean, I've already had two heads of lettuce, <laughs> a pan of carbonara, all, all some, and you're gonna put bacon caramel on it. As so yes, <laughs> I just need one scoop of ice cream. Uh, I'm using the swoon. If you've not tried the new vanilla swoon, uh, our dairy plant did a amazing job. It is so rich, it's so delicious, and you gotta try it. I'm just going with a plain, plain old vanilla. Now, chocolate, cookies and cream, whatever one you want to do is also great. I'm gonna let that sit. I'm very excited for what you're gonna see on the other side of that. I'm gonna give that time. Uh, I'm gonna use this guy. I forgot to take it out of the freezer. How many scoops you want in your sundae? Well, now I want two, because you're using a little guy. 
Uh, I, I want you guys to know that we don't do, there's no commercial break. There's no, uh, if something messes up, this is all live the entire time. Whatever happens is what happens. No, I changed my mind. I we, want mine in a cone. <laughs> no, the cone, no, no, the cone, I've got to explain what the cone is for. The cone is not for the ice cream. The cone is for the uh, little fouilletine cookie we're going to crack up and do. Ooh. So instead of making a little fouilletine, which is basically like a, I'm probably saying it wrong. Those are the Fuyatine. best looking no. scoops I've ever done in my life. You said I'm it fired. right. I'm fired. I'm fired from this. Uh, Shout out to that ice the, cream <laughs> container for not just. <laughs> the fouilletine uh, is a real thin kind of cracker. Sometimes it has nuts in it. I like to use a sugar cone shell and just kind of break it up and just put a little piece over there. Uh, you don't like nuts on your Sunday, right? No, that's gross. What if I put, can I put chocolate covered almonds on mine? Because I on like a little, bit, can, of, a little bit of nuts on mine. Let me get a, uh, a knife here. All right, are you ready to flip? I can tell, I can hear the pork is almost ready to go. I'm gonna crack just a couple of the uh, dark chocolate covered almonds. I feel like a Sunday has to have almonds. Your thoughts? I don't even or know peanut, who you not are sometimes. So much. No. <laughs> You know what? You're not alone. I don't, I don't know either. Uh, Tell us what you like on your Sunday. Sunday uh, all right, folks, we're here. It's, it's the end. Here we go. You ready for this? I like sprinkles, personally. Sprinkles, uh, sprinkles, are, sprinkles are good. Ooh, look ooh. at how soft this is, though. Let go. That's a California tan. So come on, look at this. Again, this is fully cooked. They're, 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 the fat is clinging to one another. They're clinging. Flip over. There we go. Ooh la la. Beautiful crust on those guys. Could you just put that on that big pan of pasta for me? Yes, Thanks. I can. All right, we need whipped cream. We need our caramel sauce. Here we go. This is it, folks, right here. Oh my God, it's hot caramel sauce. Oh it's my God, still this is warm. the best day. Dessert first. So just imagine like a bacon butterscotch. Come on, look at all that bacon in there. Look at all That's that. That's amazing. This isn't a bacon lover's class. All right, there's our caramel sauce. Again, save it. You can use it a different time. I just lost my spoon and went way down there. Uh, I need my whipped cream and my cherry. Yeah, I want a cherry too. Can I have two cherries? Not, I wasn't gonna give you one. I figured you would have to have two. Nice technique. Pile it high. That's, yep. That one's yours? That sounds about, oh, I got gypped. Just shows you don't always reach for the sky. Just reach high enough, right? <laughs> That's telling you. Uh, two, cherries two cherries on top. Come on, folks. This is like, up. Oh, nope. We want to be down there. I, I can't win. There we go. Okay, that's it. It doesn't want two cherry. cherries, Charlotte. You're you right. just have to go with that's one. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> Boop. That's what you get. There it is. And I'll do a little poop. Here we go. Aww. Hey, there Yay. it is. All right. Hot fudge Sunday. Uh, what I did forget on my pasta was the pecorino romano. Ooh, which is a sheep's milk oh, yeah. hard grating cheese. A little saltier. Nice work. That's got a sharpie, salty, good bite. I'm telling you. And that's it. All right, a pork belly. It's coming out right now. Hot food. Always hot, family style. That's ready to go. Put that lid Leave on the that side lid off here. of there so we can see. Uh, pork belly. Can you put see that this? on top of the carbonara. I'm not going <laughs> to put it on top of this. Or on top of the. You do it however you want. Who to made do this? It. Who did this show. over here? This is this mess. This is a. This is a, what a disaster. All right. So I want to show you. If you have not seen these, our little H E B brioche sliders. This is how I would use this. You can use the pork belly in anything. Literally, it'll go on just about anything, any different way. But I like to serve it a little like this. So you get a little barbecue sauce on it, however you want to do it. One more pair of tongs. I'm going to give you the biggest one. So can you see that? Both sides. Nice sear. You could break it up if you wanted to. Side by side here. Again, it's almost as pull apart as you can get. Wow. There's my little toothpick. Do I have a toothpick? That's not a toothpick. It'll work in a pinch. Here's how you do it. Bam. That's how that looks. And a little slider <laughs> on the side. Come on. Really, really simple. There you go, guys. Super duper easy. I hope, uh, I hope you had 
as much fun uh, watching and making these things as we did. Uh, we thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to have to clean up a giant mess over here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, those of you on Facebook, again, don't forget, you can always click on the link and you can go and buy what you see here. Uh, those of you on YouTube watching, thank you so much for showing up. If you want to grab extra content, you can always go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash H-E-B. I'll slow down, youtube.com slash H-E-B. And if you want to sign up for future classes, check out what's next. We have so much stuff in the hopper. Um, some great celebrity guests coming up in September and October, uh, which we are already in. Um, and some great stuff for the holidays, great content. All you got to do is go to hb.com slash classes. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, God bless. And we will see you next week for more, uh, more fun and shenanigans. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for seeing. We'll see you later.